So, as most of you know, uh, the BC Renaissance Festival is mine, my baby. And uh, I also play the character of Charity, and believe it or not, I'm not as insane as she is, thank God. But, you see, recently I've been trying to, to put together a promo package to make sure YouTube videos are up on, on the BC Renfest one, and, and all the pages are done, and I'm trying to get the pirates out more often, partially to satisfy my own acting needs, as, as well as, you know, get the characters out and moving, get the actors doing their stuff more and more and more. So anyway, I was asking the team to basically give me a, a bit of a, an idea of what, as volunteers, people would want nowadays, and well, what I can do. Financially, I'm a little limited and a little restricted. And I also asked them to think about and consider the reasons why they're part of the team and why they volunteer and see if we can let the world know, or at least this corner of the world know, that we've got a new project, we've got something exciting, we've got something different, and we're really looking for people to be part of it. Not only just part of it, but part of a family. Of course, all families come with conditions. I need to create those conditions off from scratch. We've got a new volunteers coordinator, you know, we've moved the old volunteer coordinator into, onto another job, etc., etc. You don't need to all know all that. Part of this process in asking why people joined us, one of my members, one of my group, said the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. He looked at me and he said, in the beginning, the only reason why I joined was because of your enthusiasm, your joy, and, and that love you give off for your own project. Well, at one time I described myself as a mother bear, and uh, apparently that's, that's pretty accurate. But it really got me thinking. You see, people say that comedy comes from tragedy. You know, that the more reality that's in something, the more hilarious it is. So if comedy comes from tragedy, then where does depression come from? Overcompensation the other way? Where does disappointment come from? Where, does, where do the negatives come from? If this laughter and this joy and this energy comes from tragedy, does that mean he got caught up in my wonderful enthusiasm or did he get caught up with all the issues that bothered me? Am I overcompensating? I guess is the question. Is anyone really overcompensating? Well, you see, that's got me to thinking then, because I'm operating a project that requires a number of people to volunteer, and they have to believe in it, and they have to feel as good as I do. It is my life. It is what I do. This project has taken away so much from me, and I don't mind. It's tough, because I don't have time to do all the little social nuance things that I used to do, and, and all that kind of stuff, but I find I'm not taking life as lightheartedly anymore, as overjoyous. Now, some of you I know are concerned you've expressed that you're worried about me not laughing enough and not smiling enough. And I keep saying over and over again, the more productive people I have on the project who will stay around for a long time and watch it grow and be part of that growth and reap the same rewards that I'm hoping to reap right alongside me. The sooner I have those people, the sooner I can take the time to do all the things that I love on top of, well, there's a few things that I get to do. I'd like to do more, don't get me wrong, but you know what? This project's my child, my kid, and he's at it. He loves the enthusiasm and the joy and the energy. That's what he loves. So if that's what attracted him, and out of anyone on my team, he's also got his business involved in it. So he's not only risking his own self, he's risking his own his business, his life. So he's right there with me. And that's what I want, that's what I need. So listen, next time you see something from me that's that's negative or depressing or morbid or dramatic, the next thing I go all serious or, or I decide to share with you guys, take a little risk and, and share something a little more personal, don't worry about it. Because underlying all that misery, somewhere in there is comedy. And Right underneath every single one of these smiles is a little bit of misery. Life is about both folks, both. And this project is gonna be it for me. The stories are gonna to continue to have the strengths and the weaknesses, the misery and the delights. We're gonna find humor in the most tragic parts of history. And we're gonna find misery and stuff they laughed at back then. So, guys, 
listen to everyone on this planet because they all have a little teeny piece that will get you thinking in another direction if you let your brain go there. Children, young ones, take it from me, no, take it from anyone that's lived and is still living. It's not as horrible as we make it out to be. And every time it's horrible, somewhere in that little misery is comedy. But don't use the comedy to avoid the issue. Use it to emotionally get past all that pain so you can solve the issue. Solve the issue. So that's what I'm going to do. I've asked my team to put together a whole sort of documentation of what they love about the Renaissance Festival, about what they feel it gives them, about what they want more of. And we're going to sit down as a group and see whether or not we can make that happen, whether or not we can give them that, which means whether or not we can give new people that. Oh, there you go. There's a nice plug eh? You want to volunteer? Come join me. You want to be part of my insanity and my sanity? You want to figure out what excites this girl? You come, you show up, you're honest with me. And you go along for the ride. If it's not your ride, it's not your ride. If it is, let's make it work, folks. Until later. Bye.